All right, so now I've added my diffuse channel. I could also put a bump on here to make it even more interesting. In fact, I'll, I will actually go in my camera view and do a quick render of my camera view with my camera selected or my camera viewport active. I'll click on the clapboard icon on the status line here. Render the current frame just so I can get a quick look at what this is giving me. Okay, so that's what it looks like without any bump applied. I'm going to store this image in my render view so I can compare it to the version that does have the bump. So that's what this little button here is. Keep image. This is a really handy feature of Maya. It'll allow me to just quickly compare the two images. Okay, so I'm going to minimize my render view just to get it out of the way. Next, I'm going to go into the shader again and I'll add a bump map. Okay, so I want to have the ground plane selected and I want to go over to the attribute editor and choose the shader node. And now I'm going to add a bump map. So I'm going into the material attributes and looking for bump mapping. And as before, I'm going to click create render node. And as before, I get the create render node dialog opening up. And once again, I'm going to choose file. And when I click file, something a little bit different happens this time because bump maps need another node called a bump 2D node that gives me the ability to set the bump depth. So this is the height of my bumps. We won't see anything yet because we haven't actually added a bump map to the file node. So we're here looking at the bump 2D node, but we actually need to go into the file node now to browse for the image. So I'll click the file node, go to the image name, click browse. And here we are once again in source images of our current project. And I've got a bump map, so I'll click bump and click open. And now I won't see anything in my viewport at this point. But if I go to my render view and I do a new render, I should see bumps. There we go. So that's a very extreme bump effect. And we can compare this to the version without the bump. So as you can see, my bump depth is way too high by default. Okay, so we're going to save that image for comparison as well. I'll minimize the render view. And I'll go back to my bump 2D node. And I'll reduce the bump depth. So the value of 1 is the default, and that's way too high. So I'm going to set it to, let's say, 0 0.2. Back in my render view, I'll do another rendering and compare. So that's a lot more like it. So here it is with no bump, bump value of 1.0, and a bump value of 0 0.2. Now we're ready to actually animate the ball. So let's figure out the, where the path of the ball is going to be relative to the camera frame. So in fact, we're going to play to the camera. We're going to animate the ball so that we know exactly when it's entering the frame and when it's exiting the frame. I'm just going to grab the, the ball and move it around and try to get a sense of where things are. So if I move it down in my front view to where it would touch the floor, hmm, that tells me that I probably want to move it a little bit closer to the camera so it'll be more centered. All right, so that looks pretty good. And then I'll move it sideways again and figure out, all right, is it passing through the center of my scene? That looks pretty good. And let's see about height. How, how high should it be? Hmm. Well, if I move it up, in my front view, you can see it in the camera view off frame. So maybe I'll move it over, I'm trying to figure out where it wants to be basically on frame one. Probably somewhere around there. That looks pretty good to me, actually. And it's essentially going to fly down to here and then up to here. So you see what I'm doing? I'm moving it in the front view so that it, it's only moving in two axes. In this case, it's moving in X and Y. It's not moving in Z at all, Z being the blue arrow here. Okay, so we're just moving in at X and Y to see what its general trajectory is going to be. Okay, so that looks pretty good. 
So for frame one, this is a probably a pretty good starting position. Now I could press the S key on my keyboard and what that would do is it would create keyframes for the selected object for all of the transforms. But I really don't want to do that because I would create more information than I really need. So I only really care about a few of the transforms on this ball. The X position is its forward momentum. The Y position is its movement up and down due to gravity. And we're also going to rotate it. Okay, but what direction do we want to rotate it? Hmm, well, let's get in the perspective view. I'll press the F key, get in close on that, try to figure out if I grab my rotate tool. Oh, okay, it looks like I want to rotate it here in this blue axis, which blue is Z, so we're rotating in Z. Well, um, unfortunately, that doesn't look too natural. It would be unlikely that the ball would spin exactly around the z-axis. It would probably have some randomness to it. And then, oh, okay, well, we want it to rotate around the world z-axis is what it looks like. Hmm, how would we solve this problem? Well, you might know if you double-click on your rotate tool, double-click, You'll get the tool settings, and there's a lot going on in here, but the only thing we're concerned with at the moment is rotate mode. And you might think it's a good idea to put this into world coordinates, because then apparently we can rotate around the world z-axis, and that's giving us a more believable spin. But unfortunately, if we did this and then we keyframe the ball, then it wouldn't actually rotate and interpolate the, the way that we would expect. So we're going to have to take a, just one extra step to make it possible for us to have the ball oriented in some arbitrary rotation, but then have it predictably rotate around the world's z-axis, as you see here. Okay, so rotating in world seems like a good idea, but the problem with that is that when we keyframe it, it's not going to come out the way we expect. So what we need to do is we need to freeze the transforms for the ball. So I've, I've rotated the ball in some arbitrary interesting rotation value and I've positioned it basically just out of frame as seen in the camera view. Alright, so my camera view is showing it's just out of frame and it's rotated in some random rotation. Okay, so if I set my rotate tool back to local, we can see that the axes are aligned with the ball and not with the world. You can see that clearly in the top view as well. I'm going to go to the modify menu with the ball selected and I'm looking for freeze transformations. In fact, let's have the channel box visible when we do that. Here are all the channels, okay, and they all have numbers. We want to reset these all back to zero, essentially, to make this the new default rotate and position. Modify, freeze transformations, and in the options you can choose which transforms you want to freeze. And the default is translate, rotate, and scale. And that's fine for our purposes now. When you click freeze transform, watch the rotate manipulator and watch the numbers. Boom! Now this is the new default position and rotation for this object. So freezing transform says this is the new zero. We're at a good place to save our scene now. So I'm going to go to my file menu, save scene as, and I'm always saving out to a new file name as I progress forward in my project. We're at ball 03 and click save. 